Today's video, I'm super happy to bring this video to you guys. I love this card. I think it's literally the best Yu-Gi-Oh card ever made. That's a staple. Like the best Yu-Gi-Oh staple ever made uh, from the main deck. Aside from Electromite, which is a staple in every deck, even non-Pendulum decks, because it's the coolest card in the world. And uh, that you could probably get actually Electromite OCG sleeves right now. Astrogap OCG sleeves and Mighty Master OCG sleeves down in the description below from our sponsor Sleeve Chief to make Electromite happy and to make this new card happy. It's going to be insane. So make sure to stay tuned to the end of the video where I'm going to discuss how this card is so broken, how it destroys every single meta deck by itself, and is probably going to need to be a three of in every single deck. Let's get started. As you guys heard earlier, I am now sponsored by Sleeve Chief. So if you guys want to get your beautiful OCG sleeves down in the description below, go do it ASAP. They're actually so freaking beautiful. Like, they're absolutely amazing. Even if you guys don't like art sleeves, you still have these ones. Can you imagine dropping a Mighty Master on your opponent with Mighty Master sleeves on a Mighty Master playmat on tripgaming.com, which you should also get right now? This is the card, Fenrir, as you guys already know what it is. Now, stay tuned to the end of the video. Don't fucking leave. Don't leave, because I said so. I thought we were boys, man. Don't leave. I'll explain right now. It's quite simply, the best Yu-Gi-Oh! monster staple in the history of mankind. I'm going to explain right now, and I want you guys to pay close attention. I want you guys to think of every single end board in Yu-Gi-Oh!, okay? Think of whatever tailor nonsense, sprite nonsense, all that shit, okay? You're going second. You hard draw Kashachi La Fenrir, okay? Hear me out. Listen. You hard draw this card, as well as all these broken cards that you play. All of them. Activate right over Monsieur. Summon token. I go faithful. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Uh, 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 I'll, I'll smashers the, to the, the token. Oh, smashers is gone. Okay. Uh, anyway, special summon. Fenrir. Effect to add. So it's plus one, plus one. Enter battle phase. Attack over a monster problem. Attack over the other. Every deck only has one answer to Fenrir. It's Celiac or Smashers. So when you get rid of the Sonic or Smashers, Fenrir becomes God card. It becomes Sphere Mode. It outs three interruptions by itself. You don't summon it right away. You have to be strategic. If you don't have right, you summon something like Perlino. That's uh, it's a card that, that activate Perlino. Uh, Smashers is a card that's like typically used on Perlino. Summon Vice's Star Frosters or Scarecloud right card. They will not allow the shit to hit the field. They'll Smashers this right away because if they, if they just stop if they stop one, the other will get the other effect. You can't just imperm or Valor. You have to get get it off the field entirely. You you use Fenrir strategically. Even scenarios where you have to tribute summon it, you use it strategically. This is what that's why it's the best card in the game. A card this powerful, uh, you think of Pancratops, a card that can only be played going second. This card can be played going first. But imagine Pancratops said, if no one controls a monster, you get special something. If you don't control a monster, you get special. So if you're going first, you can play it. Add itself to its hand. Now think of this. Let's say you drop multiple Fenrirs. There's more reasons why this card's fucking insane. Special Fenrir. Anything? Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Uh, uh, smashers? Let me smashers this right away. Okay. Special the other Fenrir from your hand. A Fenrir effect. Add another Fenrir. Fenrir enter battle phase. Oh, uh, 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 Sprite out. Okay, chain Fenrir. Get rid of your other inter interruption. Uh, anyways, enter battle phase. Literally, your all your interruptions are gone from my Fenrirs. All right, anyways, I'm going to play Yu-Gi-Oh now. This card outs two interruptions, bare minimum. Sometimes three. When used properly, it outs three. It outs two typically, though. Th that's so broken. And when you use it in conjunction with cards like Mystic Mind... Or cards like that that need to be negated, like Vices, Scareclaw. This is why I think a deck like this, if you guys are looking at it right now, a deck like this really takes advantage of this card absurdly well. And don't get me started when the whole arc of Vices, Starfrost, Rykar, Kishachi, La Fenrir, they're all tied together with Tier Limit. So when all those cards get released, the deck's going to just hit a whole new level. Uh, cards like Lubelion also, like, like 7 Lubelion, Special Magnemot, Special Lubelion, fuck, Smashers. Like, I gotta get rid of the shit ASAP. Or, it's very easy to do this. Or, like, you go into Dark, oh, fuck, let me go uh, Rhino Heart, right? Uh, not Rhino Heart, let me, let me uh, trigger my Cell Yek to uh, Collado to get the shit off the field. There's so many easy ways to, to, to get stuff off the field, and then afterwards you Fenrir. That's the trick. So, if you have cards that are able to do that, Fenrir becomes a literal, like, best card in the history, like, Exodia. I'm not joking. 
So I think it's actually mandatory to play a three only though in decks that do not draw. So you play Dangers or Magician Souls. Magician Souls would be pretty good in this deck, but you can't because of Fenrir. If you play a huge Bisted package, now Magnema and Druid. Are, it's only four Bisted cards that conflict with the Fenrir. I, if I hard draw the Fenrir, I will not activate a Bisted card. Don't play, if you play the full Bisted engine of like rebranded, branded beast, like like all these engines, like uh, the full package of Druid, Worm, Sauron here, Safe for it, all that stuff, then don't play Fenrir. If you play Nibiru, don't play Fenrir. If you play draw cards, don't play Fenrir. In engine decks like that, if you play Nibiru, don't play Fenrir. Phantasme, don't play Fenrir. That's okay. You know, if, if your deck just requires you to play stuff like that, don't play Fenrir. But if you're able to maneuver your deck around to make it so you don't have any monsters in the field and allow Fenrir to be that monster, or, or Pankertop's post side deck. Now imagine as well what makes it so insane is now imagine post side deck. You're playing Telemann, right? So your opponent is going to... You're playing Telemann. This is post side deck. Post side deck. Your opponent is siding for Telemann. Your opponent is not siding for fucking Kshatrila Fenrir. Your opponent is siding for Telemann. All these like stuff I'm telling you guys is insane knowledge. I'm not done yet. There's still even more incredible stuff about this card. But, like, I don't think people have understood yet how absurd this card is. It's truly like... Why do you think the whole Kshatrila engine is mid as fuck? Except for this guy. They're supposed it's supposed to be like the new like like fucking sick fallen of Alabaz, like you know? This is this card makes that whole deck, that whole engine fucking wild. Okay, so this is what you do. Post side deck, they don't side for for Fenrir, they side for Telemann. So they're gonna put in the Abyss Dweller, they're gonna put in fucking whatever way they have to stop Telemans, all their bisted nonsense. No problem, bro. You're gonna side out literally two of everything. Okay? You probably side out one of these. This is good. Maybe a foolish. Now look what you side in. Okay? You're still gonna get your Tillamans. You're still gonna get Curious. You're still gonna get the Beatrice. You're still gonna get to your Tillamans. You're still gonna get to all your Tillamans. But if they dwell her, you just don't go for it. And instead, you switch into a boss side deck like a side deck that's just like all boss monsters of stuff that still gets to all your engine and destroys them post side deck now you're under dweller i don't give a fuck you only have power cards that's the beauty of fenrir it acts as a whole engine on its own that allows you to play power monsters going second because now you don't just need to draw the fenrir you have a panker tops which acts as like a budget fenrir it's literally like imagine a world where panker tops is power crap one of the best cards ever made for Fenrir. Alpha is also a poor version of Fenrir, and Divine Card is a poor version of Fenrir as well. But all these eight have value. Droplets has extra value because you can go Fenrir effect, add Fenrir, Droplets, the Fenrir that you added. What else is crazy, by the way, is the Fenrir is not once returned to Special Summon. It's another card that's another thing that's fucking wild. And here's something else that's wild about you guys waited this long. This tidbit that people don't even know. It doesn't say target a face of monster. It says target a face of card. It stops rivalry award lords. It stops goes and match. It stops all that stuff. So for those people that are scared of floodgates like that, you don't need to play a fucking random cosmic bullshit. Like I like just an example I showed here. You could play Fenrir. It outs it. It Fenrir stops so much shit. It's fucking wild. And look at it. Look at the like. Imagine going second with this deck. I would, I would remove the Celiac, actually. Probably put Vice Star Press back in. And, like, imagine going second with this deck. You can't lose. Like, you actually just cannot lose going second with this deck. And now, if you're playing a version that doesn't, like... That dis gets destroyed by Tillerman, you just side out, like, the Enchantress package, for example. Or you side out, like... You get what I'm saying? You look at the engine that you play, or let's say something that Bisted is useless against. You remove the whole Bisted engine, and you just put all, all these go second cards in. So... That's the beauty of Fenrir. There's like 17 reasons why. And this deck just so happened to be the best version of it. There are a few other ways to make Fenrir broken. Such as playing Mannequin Cat Turbo. Where you play like Nimbles. You play a, a whole Sprite Engine. Stuff like that. A bunch of level 2s. You go Sprite Sprint. Mannequin Cat. And try and... If they have an Earth or a Psychic. You special the Fenrir. This card just busted. Like it really is. And the fact that it's recurring. Uh, you just get one on one turn. And then every single turn you get one. That's also why we're playing three Lubellion and three Magnemite. 
It's the idea that you'll never lose the grind game. If Magnema searches Lubelion, Lubelion searches Magnema, Magnema searches Lubelion, Lubelion searches Magnema, Magnema searches Lubelion, Lubelion searches Magnema. It's a never-ending plus DD Kuro engine, whereas Fenrir will always be searching itself. And because you're not ending on an actual Bisted, you will always have Fenrir in hand. So every single turn, you're starting with Fenrir and Lubelion. So imagine a world where you could begin your turn with Fenrir and Lubelion and enter the battle phase, clear everything, and then actually play Yu-Gi-Oh! This is for three turns in a row, where if you open any of these engines, you have a Fenrir engine, you have a Lubelion engine, you have a Fateful Adventure engine, you have three huge engines that recycle themselves every single turn. You will lose no grind game. It's fucking busted. It really is. And the, uh, how tier limits act in their plussing and their value is just absurd. So I think this is the best way to play Fenrir. And check it out for yourselves. You guys can check out this, this deck. Try it for yourselves. It's actually a very easy deck to play. It's absolutely broken. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys got this far, make sure to smash the subscribe button. Guys, I want to hit 100,000 so bad within the next six months. I appreciate a lot of you guys can smash the subscribe button if you haven't already. For those that want to be these beautiful uh, sleeve chief sleeves make sure to get them down the description below they're absolutely beautiful they're really amazing ocg sleeves and in conjunction with the trip gaming playmat on tripgaming.com i think you guys will always have the best sleeves of all time so thank you guys for watching the video i love you guys i'll see you guys in the next video peace